Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out the new Skate game that just launched in Early Access using the RTX 5070 Ti. We're using the ASUS Tough Gaming OC version of our 5070 Ti. Of course, it has 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 video memory. We're playing on the latest NVIDIA drivers, pairing with a 9800X3D as well as 64 gigabytes of DDR5. Let's hop in. All right, starting off here at 1080p, uh, we're going to go for the highest setting. Now, as far as our upscaling goes, unfortunately, there isn't actually DLSS in the game. I don't know if it's coming later. It is a Frostbite engine game, as far as I know, which typically does have DLSS support. Fortunately, it's not implemented quite yet. We have FSR or XCSS if we did have to go for any sort of upscaling. I'm just going to set upscaling to off. And for our native test here, let's just do temporal. We have FXAA also temporal should give us a better result and then as far as our global presets here we have ultra high medium and low and you can see these all kind of taking effect and kind of nice actually that you can kind of see in the background how it kind of looks so we're just going to go for ultra here only thing i am going to come in here and adjust is just setting our motion blur to off so starting off here you can see that we are immediately in a CPU bound scenario. So I did go through and play through at least uh, the beginning of our kind of tutorial section, which uh, it's actually a pretty extensive tutorial. Um, but you can see certainly here at 1080p, this does lead to a very, very CPU bound scenario, even with a 9800X3D. So not super surprising given the fact that this is an Unreal Engine game, or sorry, not an Unreal Engine game, but that it's an open world game rather um, open world games typically tend to be a little bit more uh, CPU demanding and that does seem to be the case here. So uh, while it certainly is very high FPS and the game looks great, even with the temporal anti-aliasing or the TAA, still looks pretty solid, no really major concerns and uh, frame rate is very stable. There is kind of a little bit of a hitch uh, that I am no noticing. Um, it's kind of going away. Let's see if we restart counting if it kind of drops down to that um, 50 FPS 1% low. It's actually, it's not super noticeable, but there is definitely a little bit of weirdness going on. I'm just kind of uh, going to attribute that to just, you know, the open world nature of the game. But obviously, as you can see here, our GPU is unfortunately at this point, not the bottleneck. It is our CPU. And this is a pretty, um, you know, beefy CPU to be pairing with the 57 Ti. Uh, not necessarily one that I think a lot of people wouldn't use, but certainly, you know, seems to be um, pretty good as far as just, you know, saying that this is not a super graphically demanding game. The Frostbite engine is a pretty well optimized game engine, so I am happy to see that, you know, um, they decided to opt for, you know, this as opposed to, you know, some more modern, uh, less well optimized engine like a Unreal Engine type game. Um, but the game looks good. It definitely has like kind of this cartoony type art style. Now, I will test the presets just briefly here. So we are on our highest right here, getting around 165 on our average. We'll go ahead and exit into our settings here. And let's just see if changing our preset, say if we go down to high as opposed to ultra, if this results in any different performance. Don't really expect it to due to the fact that our um, CPU seems to be our bottleneck here. So. In fact, it's actually giving us slightly worse performance where we were getting 165 average. We did see that drop not super significantly, but down to 150. So unfortunately, this does seem to be a CPU bound scenario. Not, you know, the worst thing in the world. CPU bound scenarios when we're already getting, you know, very high FPS is uh, not the end of the world. So uh, not terrible to see here. And I imagine that will change as we kind of bump up our resolution settings. But obviously a game like this, you know, you don't need like super high fps but it is nice to see that you know when there is like a lot of motion going on you would like to definitely have that motion be clear and really the best way to do that is to have a high fps which we are achieving here and we're also doing all of this natively now we could of course use a bit of our upscaling options like fsr or something like that however I actually don't expect that to really change our experience to any super uh, meaningful degree, given the fact that we are in a CPU bound scenario, but let's just throw it on and see how it looks. So again, we are of course at uh, 1080p, so I wouldn't really want to use too much uh, upscaling anyways, but if we did just throw it on FSR at balance, image quality does take a pretty significant hit, but as you can see, there's not really any great reason to use uh, upscaling at this point, given the fact that we are um, once again, at you know a CPU bound 
uh, situation here. So good FPS here at 1080p. Seems like maybe uh, this 150 FPS is, might be like the most that we could really hope for as we kind of begin increasing our resolution just due to the you know CPU bound nature of this particular title. So not bad whatsoever, but uh, you know certainly I, I guess you know I would like to get a bit more ideally but it is a pretty big game world and it is all pretty seamless you know there is like this big map a lot of different npcs cars things like that there's a lot going on in the game so not super surprising and also has you know it's an always online game so we do also have like other players roaming around and, and stuff like that so there are certainly other factors that are kind of contributing to potentially it being a bit uh cpu heavy now moving up to 1440p and we are back on the highest settings here at native using TAA once again. So this is now ultra 1440p native resolution. Now uh, you can see here it's relatively, you know, similar performance here. It's getting uh, maybe slightly, slightly lower FPS where we were getting around like 140, 150. Now we're seeing drops into the 130s. Still obviously, you know, very high FPS, but we are starting to push our GPU just a little bit more. However, our GPU utilization is still relatively low, uh, sitting right around the 70s. So we are still in a CPU bound scenario, just not quite as CPU bound. Um, and once again, you know, given the fact that we are on a uh, 9800X3D being in a CPU bound scenario is uh, actually, you know, quite a feat. So uh, you could get different performance, certainly if you were on um, a weaker uh, CPU or had a weaker CPU pairing, that's definitely possible. You wouldn't be seeing um, this high of FPS, but it is nice to see that, you know, you can get this FPS just so long as you are, you know, in a position where you kind of, you know, have a CPU that's, you know, able to push the frames. As far as our 1% lows, they did improve ever so slightly where we were getting right around 50 or so. We are now starting to see that drop just ever so slightly into, or actually increase ever so slightly into like the 70 range. So that is nice to see. Pulling about uh, 10 gigabytes of video memory, obviously well within our 16 gigabytes that this card does offer. So while we could go in and, and test some of our other um, presets here, which I guess we may as well just throw on. Let's actually just go all the way down to low to see if this uh, changes our experience any meaningful degree. It is also nice to see that it really does uh, kind of make that change pretty quick. Um, now here at low settings, strangely enough, we are now getting pretty terrible FPS. Looks like we're locked actually at 30. Let me actually make sure that there isn't some other option that maybe uh, implemented some sort of global setting here. That's a bit strange that going down to low here limited our FPS to such a meaningful degree. Um, kind of strange. I'm not sure exactly what would have caused such the drastic drop there to 30 FPS. Um, and it's kind of strange too, because it's sitting right at 30 FPS and obviously our CPU and our GPU have, um, more leeway to work with. So that is actually pretty interesting. I'm not hundred percent sure what is causing that, um, drop in our FPS when going down to the low preset. Let's actually try bumping up just one more up to medium and see if that resolves our issue. And it does seem like going up to medium does resolve that issue. That is super strange. Um, I cannot personally remember ever experienced that. If you know why that may uh, be happening, please let me know. I have actually absolutely no idea. But here you can see on medium, you know, if you were okay, it kind of has like this bit of like cartoony type art style. So if you are okay, you know, dropping down your presets, you're still going to be getting like the same experience. It doesn't look like super meaningfully worse or better on medium as opposed to ultra. Um, in my opinion. So if you were okay, you know, playing on lower settings, you can achieve that with a bit more FPS. So take a little bit of load off. Let's see if we can finish this line here. Not quite. Uh, you can, you know, do this and take a bit of a load off of your GPU and, you know, get a bit higher of FPS. So there's another option for you. It does feel, you know, pretty buttery smooth. I will say at 200 FPS, it does feel really, really nice. Unfortunately, I'm not sure what is uh, causing that drop when we go to low. Let's try it one more time, see if we can get this to work. This is kind of just, you know, the nature of testing this stuff. So, yeah, going over to low, I'm not sure what exactly is causing it to um, 
locked at 30 FPS. There isn't like a global override as far as I know for our FPS. So that is uh, incredibly strange. But regardless, I probably I wouldn't recommend really going to low settings anyways. Probably medium settings, especially on this particular GPU is the lowest I would go. And this does give you a native 200 FPS experience. And I actually don't really imagine that even going and uh, implementing, you know, balance up SAR. As you can see, this doesn't really improve our FPS to a meaningful degree. It does kind of seem to give us maybe a bit more stable of 200 FPS. And strangely enough, it doesn't seem to be reaching over 200 FPS in any particular situation. So I'm not sure if there is a engine cap of 200 FPS. Um, just due to the fact that we are bumping right up to 200 and never going above seems to tell me that maybe there might be um, some sort of, uh, you know, block in place. But certainly 1440p here, you can play at max settings at native resolution and get really solid experience. And then if you want a bit more FPS, you can also, you know, you have the option to come in and um, lower some settings and achieve a, a bit higher of FPS as well. And finally, moving up to 4K, starting off here at native using TAA at highest possible settings here. So this is certainly the position where I would expect that we are now going to be GPU bound, which does seem to be the case. So this does finally put us into a place where, OK, maybe, you know, it would be nice to have DLSS, given the fact that while this is still very high FPS and the game feels and is running smooth um, on these you know, particular settings, you can see getting right around 100 FPS on our average with 56 for our 1% low. It's not a, you know, terrible experience by any means. Um, I could definitely see the case be made for, you know, wanting a bit more. So let's actually go in and before we start bumping down settings, let's actually just use a little bit of that upscaling. Now that we're at uh, 4K resolution, you know, using FSR at quality here, for example, shouldn't look too bad, shouldn't look too different than native. And this does now get us into um, kind of where we were seeing, you know, native at 1440p before. So now we're seeing 134 FPS on our average and 1% uh, low down around 70 FPS. Not a terrible experience by any means, um, but um, you know, I teach their own. I, I would like to see higher 1% lows, a bit smoother of an experience. Most of the time, you know, open world games do kind of have a tendency to be a bit, um, you know, have some issues with 1% lows when you're kind of streaming in new areas, especially on older engines, um, or even on some newer engines like Unreal Engine 5, you do still see some of those issues like we've kind of experienced in, um, some of our Borderlands tests so far. So, um, not too terrible here would like to maybe see a bit more but it is nice to see that you know you can use FSR and it quality here still looks pretty solid not really too bad running around like different parts of the map here you can see too doesn't really result in any sort of meaningful performance decrease coming in and kind of um, you know loading in some new areas still seems to be uh, you know running pretty solid around 130 fps on our average now let's see what we could expect if we were wanting to maybe come in and rather than using um upscaling if we want to stick with native and go down to high let's see if maybe the high preset is a little bit less demanding and it does seem that bumping down your preset also is another way to achieve a bit higher fps now getting into um you know the uh 116 fps on our average here above 100 pretty much all the time one percent low is still kind of sitting around about half of our fps not a super great experience um, but does feel a little bit better than what we were seeing when we were um you know at 150 fps and seeing 50 fps for our one percent low but in general here, here uh, looks pretty solid now i guess the other thing to kind of test here of course we could come in and implement upscaling at that point but let's see if you just wanted to go for you know lowest possible settings let's try low here it's looking like this is uh still kind of giving us that 30 fps um lock on low settings that is super strange now this game is in early access so they're you know it's very likely a little bit of weirdness some jank that uh will likely be polished out but it is a bit strange i can't remember ever a low setting kind of implementing an fps cap like this is kind of seeming to do and uh kind of doing without our consent here a little bit strange um so unfortunately low doesn't really seem like an option that we are really going to want to explore but what if we wanted just lowest possible settings while still getting a high fps 
let's try medium here the medium preset here at native resolution using um, that TAA is another way to kind of get a really good looking image really sharp looking image with TAA at 4k looks really really solid and now we are getting um, let's start recounting our FPS that's kind of a bit strange 20 FPS for our 1% low it does seem to kind of fluctuate um, but looking a little better now so this is another way to kind of achieve a bit higher fps we are still across all of our settings tested here at um 4k except for low which um kind of just you know having some weirdness here but um we are always in a gpu bound scenario at 4k which is uh not necessarily a bad thing now it does also kind of open the door for hey if you wanted lowest possible settings here you go play it native you can get 160 fps average and now what if we wanted you know to um get highest possible fps and we we're okay using a little bit or a lot of bit of upscaling so let's go ahead and throw on fsr and let's actually just go all the way to performance which performance fsr in my opinion here not really what I would go for, <coughs> excuse me, but um, it is definitely an option if you want highest possible FPS. And it does seem to be true, kind of what we were expecting earlier about there being a 200 FPS cap. So that 200 FPS cap is uh, certainly being reached now. You can see really solid 1% lows at this point too. And we are no longer in a GPU bound scenario here at performance. Now it's likely that you'd be able to reach this type of performance even without going as far as down to performance upscaling. Let's try balanced here. I'm expecting this to be just about 200 FPS as well, which is what we're seeing here. Um, and obviously now that we're not you know, relying on that FSR technology as much, we are getting a little bit better looking of a picture here and honestly medium settings do look pretty solid in this game uh it's not really like a super um you know demanding game or anything like that not really like a super visually demanding game even like some fire effects things like that you can see it's not really dropping our fps whatsoever so really the most demanding portion of the game is the open world which is going to be mostly demanding on the cpu end um, so you will need, if you want high FPS, you will need a CPU to kind of pair with your GPU to kind of, you know, see that FPS, um, be fully realized. But otherwise, um, as far as the GPU end goes, not really super, super demanding here. Anyways, guys, that's been Skate on the 5070 Ti. A bit of a short video here. Just figured I would uh, jump in and show. This game is free. It's an early access. Um, I believe it will be a free game even in full release, but it's definitely free right now. Now it's on Steam. So if you have a GPU, it's not a super demanding game. Really, it seems to be more demanding on the... Um, on the CPU end so I would just recommend whoa that was weird um, but I would really just recommend uh, jumping in and giving it a try and kind of see you know what you can uh, what you can get in the game not really uh, you know too demanding and you know game has a very simplistic kind of art style so seems to be um, a pretty solid game if you just want to come in and waste a few hours you know and uh, and play through the world really actually a pretty fun game a game that I uh, you know put a lot of time into when I was younger and nice to have a, a kind of you know relaxing type game like this back on the market all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye